So let's go ahead and change the font of our Visual Studio Code. For that, press Command Shift P, open the command palette, and search for settings. Open the settings. Uh, let's toggle the sidebar. I have put some comments here in the user settings area to make it format a little better. These are the settings that are being contributed by third party via Sublime Text Schema that we just installed. And our theme setup includes shades of purple and VS Code icons. Let's go ahead and search for the font family, font family, and let's just copy it to the settings. I'm going to delete the font size for now. I recommend that you change the default font to something uh, like operator, which is a paid $200 font, but I really like how it is. You spend a better part of your whole life looking at this code. It's only fair that it looks good. I recommend that you try out operator. If you're looking for a better free option, I recommend that you try Fira code. You can find Fira code on GitHub. Go ahead, click download and install it on your system. After that, right at the bottom, you'll find that it has a uh, instruction for Visual Studio code. For in font family, we need to put Fira code. Okay, let's go to the user settings area and add Fira code here. So it changed the font for us. The next thing that they are recommending is font ligatures. Let me just show you what it is. I'm going to search for font ligatures and enable font ligatures, which are set to false by default, setting it to true. Okay, now if you go ahead and take a look at this file, let me zoom it a little bit. Okay, I'm checking if the stack is empty and this particular function returns a true or false. So this right here are three equal signs. And this is what uh, font ligatures do. For example, if I'm going to write not equal, it is going to turn it to something like this. If I'm going to type uh, hyphen and then greater than sign, a uh, nice little arrow. And here is how the fat arrow looks like. Even the greater equal to signs are different. You can also try another free font, Source Code Pro by Adobe, which is also a pretty good font. Anywho, since I like Operator Mono, I'm going to change it to Operator Mono. And there you go. The next thing I'm going to add is the font family for the integrated terminal. If you press control and tilde, you can find the terminal right here at the bottom. And I for one use these uh, in console auto power line patch fonts, which you might not, which are, which are pretty much out of the scope here for this particular course. So I'm just going to paste my own settings and you're welcome to use Fira code for there as well. For that, let's search terminal let's copy this setting terminal dot integrated dot font family i'm just going to paste it here so i'm going to use operator mono on top of in consolata for powerline you can find powerline fonts on github on this link now the size of this font looks really small so i'm going to search for font size i'm going to make it something like 17. i really like this one size but you can choose whatever fits the bill for you after setting the font size let's search for fonts line height and there it is. So something is wrong. Unable to write to user settings. File is dirty. Okay, so you have to press save to make sure that the file is saved before you are trying to add something new to it. So I just press command S uh, to save this file. Now I'm going to edit and now it works. A good typography practice is to have your line height 1.45 times of your font size. So I'm going to open up Nomi. 17 is my font size and 1.45 times becomes 24.65. So let's Keep it to 24.65 and that is good enough. Let's define the font weight now. Uh, font weight. Okay. Editor.font weight should be somewhere around 400. You can set it to whatever you think is right for you. This is just a personal setting for me based on the operator mono font. So the next thing I'm going to change is the letter spacing between each letter. And for that, let's search for letter spacing. And there you go. I'm going to keep it to 0.5. Yeah, I think that's good enough. And the final setting that I'm going to add related to font is font aliasing. Uh, let's search for alias. Okay, it basically controls how your font is being rendered on the screen. I'm going to turn it to auto. What this is going to do is if I'm on a Mac and I have a retina screen, it will render my font a bit thin. For example, if I'm at a conference and the external monitor that I connected to is a simple HD monitor, then it will render this font a bit thicker. So I think our font setup is looking pretty good. Let's see how the code looks. It looks pretty clean and neat, much better than we had before these settings. This is what we had before the setting. It was hard to read and, and right after I add these settings, this is what it looks like now. Pretty neat, right? 